given me so much that I too, uh, it's time to get back to the sport. Uh, Jeff Birchfield, um, wrestled in high school, some wrestling. I'd love to try to coach, but I just don't have the time for that. So I thought officiating would be a good way to get back. I'm John Fisher, and uh, I officiate to stay away from my wife as much as possible. <laughs> you know we're videotaping this. <laughs> and she's registered. She's the videos called. are public. She's glad I officiate. She's the one that she's the one that put him into officiating. As long as she gets a check again, it's good. She gets more out of it than you do. Me? Yeah. Paul Jackson, I uh, just to stay around the sport. I've been around for a couple of years, and I, apparently I enjoy it. So. <laughs> well, uh, Matt Grogan, uh, pretty much just like Paul. I just do it to just stay involved, get out, and keep you know interacting with people. And and as long as my body continues to let me get up and down off the mat, I'll probably stick with it. One day that won't be the case, though. <laughs> And I've been in a couple of years less than Paul. <laughs> Gary Emerson wrestled for three years in high school, coached at the same school for 12 years, got out for wifeish issues. Um, and I just wanted to come back and get involved in the sport. And I know how much coaching takes out of your day. And I thought officiating would be a good way to go. And I recognize Lewis and I recognize Paul because I think. This one wrapped a few of my matches in the day. <laughs> nice to meet you. So, just want to get back to the sport. Another Gary. Yeah. Gary Lindenstein. Um, well, I started because I was taking kids to tournaments and it was less boring to sit there all day and watch it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I started helping out with the and then I just kept. <clears throat> Fred Gorham, appreciate because we are an example to our society. We are wrestlers, and it's a great sport, and we are the few uh, last of the gentlemen that uh, give pride to people and teach people how to interact and grow up in life. And we are an example to the world, so we are a special breed of, of great men. Well, 
<laughs> Paul didn't even know he was a great man. I'm Mike Schneider. What friend did you say he also likes to throw out spectators? For me, I like to be involved in wrestling in some way. This is the way to keep it up. Curtisville, uh, I got involved. I uh, wanted to coach, but where I lived, and uh, there's no teams close by, so um, I just wanted to get back to the sport, be involved with it. And, uh, you know. Carter Wright, and uh, I just enjoy being out there on the mat, watching people compete. Uh, Wayne Lug, I just like to be sitting in traffic. I would say, Ball just asked me, and I, you know, I was just there. Uh, uh, Chuck Tompkins, aside from being a glutton for punishment, um, no, I uh, like most of the guys were saying, I, I, uh, I got a lot out of the sport and I want to just give back whatever I can. Brian Lovis, uh, give back like a lot of people to, that's a good one. Kill yeah, Wojvodich, uh, I wrestled since I was four and it was time to give back, so yeah. He's 16 now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Andrew Turner, uh, I don't really have a choice. Yeah. <laughs> the man who pays the bills tells me. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. it's, a, it's a lot of fun, honestly, just being involved and staying active in it. And, you know, being part of it and being part of something bigger than yourself is kind of cool. So. Uh, Michael Screen, uh, my fish hick is watching. Um, some of the refs, or lack of refs, at uh, my son's tournament, uh, Gurley Bonkers. And I don't really make friends anyway, so I figured I might, as well <laughs> might as well give a reason not to like you. Yeah. You didn't buy a gun or anything, did you? David Douglas, um, no time to coach, and uh, i trying to say. Uh, someone at a tournament approached me about doing it, so I was like, why not? You're up, man. <coughs> Read the board. Read the board. All right. I thought we already covered this last week. Why do I officiate? My name's Christian Beckett, and why do I officiate? Because wrestling is the best sport in the world. There we go. Yeah. That was last week. That was last week. I am. Well, I officiate. Yeah, I'm good. I'm Bob Turner, and I appreciate the same reason a lot of guys do to give back. Like, like covering the apprentice training, we're stewards of the sport. We're trying to pass the sport on to others, and that's why I entered in to help pass the sport on to the next generation. Now I'm on my second or third generation to pass it. <laughs> and I'm here in Westburg, and I so love being yelled at by strangers that I appreciate the sports. hospitality. Yeah, right. Hey. Yeah, that was a hot too. <laughs> um, if you were here last week, you remember that we talked about bylaws, and um, I didn't get any questions during the week, so I don't, I'd love some direction from you guys about whether you want to review the bylaws, whether you just want to vote on them. I have them up here in the next six or seven slides, go over the changes. Um, if you want to discuss them, raise your hand. If you want to vote, raise your other hand. So, wait, hold on a sec. so the reason for the change of the bylaws, let's say this one per se, is in the event that there is somebody that is wants to come and join the association that may have a checkered pass that the WOA has already approved, but maybe the board chooses that they don't want to allow them to participate in our association. This gives the board the opportunity to be able to say no where before it wasn't that way. So, what you're saying is all true. The last year, the association passed a motion stating, stating that, but it was inconsistent with the bylaws. Okay. So going back to the bylaws, I found all these inconsistencies. Okay. So I'm just trying to make it consistent so that we are in uh, compliance with our own bylaws. So that's what this one in particular says. And I get the feeling you guys just really are very interested in the bylaws. So I'm very interested in the bylaws. What I'm curious about on this one is whether or not the board can expel a member that may otherwise be out of favor. Yes. yes. Yeah. 
That's already in the bylaws. Yeah, and I don't I don't remember the bylaws word for word. But since it wasn't, wasn't a change, I didn't write it up. Yeah. Okay. Um, Conduct is an important part of the whole thing, and the board can act on that. This one we had a we had a board member a few years ago who just sort of disappeared, Christian. <laughs> and um, so it, it's nice to be able to remove a board member. So that's what this is about. Okay. Oh, it's called the Beckett. The Beckett. Beckett. Oh, Beckett. Yes. <laughs> Beckett <laughs> provision. <laughs> the, Beckett, the Beckett provision. <laughs> um, this one we have. There was the bylaws state two sorts of committees. We don't do this. Just cleaning up the bylaws. That's all. This is. Again, it's just basically saying we can have committees, but they're not mandated that right. we must have them and they must meet eight times a year and they must do this and that. It's like if, if people have the energy and want to form a committee, you can do that. Um, this one has to do with uh, complying with WOA standards about le levels of officials. So this is a registered official. All it says is we have registered officials and they must meet the requirements of WOA for registered officials. I like the word change is good. Same thing with certified officials. And now we have postseason officials. This is again, this is, should be nothing new to anybody. This is just making the bylaws comply with the reality. Uh, this one has to do with um, LNI insurance for uh, WIAA schools uh, and non WIAA schools. Um, just so everybody understands what's provided and what's not. And on a personal note, I can tell you, having just gotten hurt in the high school football game, that Ellen I really doesn't matter all that much. They declined my claim. So they paid for my stitches years ago. Um, a very specific thing about Ellen I: if you get hurt, you gotta let the assigner know right away that you've been hurt and make a claim right away. Otherwise, they don't know that you've been hurt. And if you try and make the claim sometime later, so let's say a month later, it may not be approved. So, Bob, is that accurate? Isn't there a form online that says, hey, if I can hurt you? Yeah, I don't know. Central, there's a, central yeah. Hub. If there is Central Hub, is all the information. Yeah, okay, yeah, because we've never had, I've never gone through that process with anyone. Yeah. <coughs> Where is it online? It's on a central, a central Hub. Central Hub. Or, 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 it's on the, 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 Chuck? Yeah, the, the, the main thing, exactly what Christian's saying, is not only do you let Bob know, but you're there at the site. You get hurt at the site. You would have the trainer, you would have the coach acknowledge that you have been injured. Um, from my personal experience, that was, I had the trainer actually treat me. And, um, and then I was given the direction of what to do next as far as notifying Todd, etc. Now that was right in between Jack and, and Bob, I think. But anyway, long and short of it is, is I had sound to contact the WOA. Sound advice. In my case, I'm an umpire in football, which means I get knocked down all the time. I didn't realize I was injured right. until it didn't heal. Right. 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 If it's not very serious, I may say, come on, buck up. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Tough enough. Especially, <laughs> especially, <laughs> especially if it's a head injury. Right. Um, I, I think as opposed to going to a coach, which I, I understand. I mean, there, there's, there's a head official at a tournament or there's the meet administrator at a dual meet. Uh, but again, we're separate from them, right? So just because we're heard at a school doesn't mean that the school is responsible. We have an association and we need to go ahead and do things through our association. First and foremost, the local association and the WOA. Those guys and the WIA, those guys are the ones who pay the premiums. Those are the ones where we need to go ahead and make sure that there's a record. And just because the coach may know, doesn't necessarily mean that the coach is going to fill out the form. No, no, no. I was the reason I said the coach. I'm talking about a witness. A oh, yeah, witness yeah. on site. Just get it on record. Yeah. Somebody on site. Get them to recognize that you are hurt, so that at that point in time you have validation when you go to Bob, you go to WA, you go to. Yeah, I'll bring us back to our agenda. Okay. Aside okay. Of the, yes. Back to the bylaws. Uh, this uh, was, I guess, an artifact from years ago. Uh, you have to keep paper records. Yeah, 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 yeah. this is pre-arbiter, so I just scratched that. Um, this means you agree to pay WP and WA dues, uh, and uh, postseason assignments. Again, this is no change from how we do things. This is just making a record. All right. So that was the last one. Given that, any questions? I move, I move to approve the bylaws. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, pain. Aye. Aye. 
It's two votes for Fred. Thank you. <laughs> we want right. some peace in their body. Yeah, the the <laughs> All right, Gemini. <laughs> All right, so an update on the video training program. So, past couple of years, we've invested uh, substantial human resources in developing this video training program, and we are planning to continue it even though it is no longer associated with the state run RTO program. We found value in it for ourselves and we plan to continue it. <clears throat> um, Damon is going to be running the program this year. Uh, in here in Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Is he going on the screen too much in the last year? Yeah. You got tired of being the guy. That's one way to keep yourself off the video. Hey, man. Very just a couple changes in how we uh, how we finished the program. Um, it didn't prove practical to make it a requirement. Uh, there is, if, if somebody refused to participate, there was literally nothing we could do. So um, rather than say it's mandatory and, and have people know that it's not, we're just going to make it voluntary again, uh, encouraging people to participate at all levels. But it will be a requirement for a postseason assignment. So, if you don't want to participate, that's fine. Just let Damon know, let me know too, just so I'm in the know. Um, uh, and uh, just understand that you won't get a postseason assignment if you don't, if you choose not to participate. Um, last week, Paul asked about emphasizing some of the newer guys, and that, that seemed like a pretty good, uh, pretty good suggestion. So, um, in terms of responsibilities, there'll be two assignments for every, everybody the season, uh, depending on where you fall in, in the member rankings, uh, it will either be a video assignment and an eval assignment, or just two eval assignments for the upper tier guys, or two video assignments for the lower tier guys. Does that make sense? So this means we go online, view a video, and then take the test? So, so for the guys who are new, what it means is uh, we had, we, last year we started videotaping ourselves. <coughs> We have three cameras in the association. Damon will come up with a schedule. You'll be assigned to videotape yourself. You um, put the camera up before you start in the corner of the mat, press the record, and then you go do your thing. And when you're done, press stop, upload the video to a OneDrive site. Well, I'll send all this information out again. So this is Damon will send all this information out. Damon will send all this information out. Um, and, um, then another member will be assigned to evaluate based on the video. Uh, for new guys, uh, it'll be two uh, video assignments, one for yourself uh, and possibly one at a tournament videotaping other guys. Um, Something to keep in mind, it, it, it's just for growth and development purposes. It's not like, a, oh, you got 100, you got a 91, therefore a, you're a better official. It's just to give guys feedback based off of observing them while they're in action. That's all. It's also been very valuable to see each other up there when you're talking about calls, to see what you're talking about. You can have a discussion in here about an actual call from a high school match. And we all get to see each other, so it's not like anybody gets picked on or anybody is... Except Damon. Except Damon. Except Damon. Except Damon. Yeah, Damon gets pretty fast now. What do you mean by unpaid? What if, I mean, if we're pushing the button, we're already getting paid to be there. You're getting paid to officiate. You're not getting paid to right, right. video. Well, we don't have to go on a. We don't no. have to take a Tuesday off. Right. And go exactly. The first, video. like the first year we did it, where you had to go videotape somebody else. We're not going back to that. Okay. So, so double dual, we could do each other. Probably. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, question. Uh, when you were talking before, I thought you said that state rank officials were exempt. They're exempt from being subject to video. But there's, we still need their expertise to evaluate other guys. So they can either do so two evals can... or they can be videoed once and do an eval on someone else. Exactly. Oh. Their choice. Yeah. And if you're a state evaluator, you have to evaluate seven. Right. <laughs> you have to evaluate one. <laughs> so, <laughs> just to sharpen your Okay. Shoes. You have to sit on one map. And... <laughs> <Yeah>. More forthcoming <laughs> is, uh, is Damon puts together the schedule for this. So. I have one camera. I don't know what. I guess Mike and I have and one. Lewis and I, I'm trying to dig up mine. I'm not sure it where exactly is mine, but I'm going to get my wife. So, yeah, plan on bringing it back either next week or on the 27th. Okay. 
Did some people last year use their phone to video? And I think vote? I think we tried that. There's just no, not enough memory, and okay. it end up with you know. That's so okay. yeah, get the stick. Why are you out there? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I saw your boat problem on the wrestlers. <laughs> 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 Sour face. No <laughs> oh, problem. Yeah, there you go. No problem. No problem. That would be interesting. Uh, WA Clinic and Test are live at the month today. You find it by going to the Central Hub and you see where I've got the little red box. It's the eligibility center. Everybody see that? You don't, don't click on the wrestling link. Yeah, right, eligibility center. Ray Bar. Okay. Um, there are six requirements. So, if you've been around for a while, you remember that you need a background check, um, which if you've done once, you don't have to do again. For you guys who are new to WOA, it's a ten dollar fee. You pay it directly to them. Takes care of background check. I thought we had to do that every three years. Every three years. Do we? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, if you're up for a new background check, it'll let you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's a concussion management clinic. Uh, it says I did mine in 2013, so I have to do it again. And that's a complaint I have. We don't have access to that once you've taken it once, uh, the concussion test. I think, I think as important of a, and this is more of a board thing, I think you, the board needs to recommend a WA that every year we have to take that test. Every year. Because it's such a critical part of. of um, I'm not. I'm not there. sure that other people would agree with you, but what I what I do agree with is that the information should be available. We so should be able to click on it. And get let it. me find out how to get it back online so that people can take it again. Um, I've never heard anybody show that additional requirements. So. Um, the uh, there's a WOA clinic, as there has been in the past. This year, there's another clinic. It's a WA NASA clinic, so you can learn, get to learn about how great NASA is. Uh, yeah. uh, and then there's the wrestling clinic and the wrestling test. So, all told, I would say well, I, I took all the first four things in the, in the fall for football, but um, I'd say it's probably a couple hours of time. So, and you're just at the computer watching the video or yeah, something. Yeah, is that yeah. What this and, is? and really, if, when you're watching the, the WA the clinic and the NASA yeah. clinic. If you put it on the background and go do something else, you won't be the only person doing that. But they live, give you a little quizlets. They do give you a little quizlets. They'll stop and say, okay, <laughs> the WA convention is held in A, Seattle, B, Yakima, Spokane, C, yeah. Spokane. Right? What is the date of the clinic? Yeah. Yeah. So you, you have to sort of pay attention. If you miss it, you got to go back and do that section again. Yeah. Yeah. So, when do we need to have this the requirements? Mm -hmm. In order to get assignments. By the 20th. Who wants assignments? 20th. November 20th. So I'm going to push the assignments out and I'll talk about it when you give us my portion. So. Um, when the time comes for the RTO endorsements, this is, you go to the same place, the eligibility clinic, and they just end up being looking at additional requirements. So it's all in the same place. Uh, you get six attempts to pass a test. You need 70% to pass. Um, All right, so, uh, so to follow up on uh, John's question there, uh, I need you to have your eligibility center requirements to be a certified official done by November 20th. So we'll start having high school contests starting, the very first one is November 25th. Roosevelt's having a, you know, their annual jamboree to start things off. So that's the very first high school. And you can't do any high school, whether it's JV or varsity, unless you're a certified official. So by the 20th, have that done. I'm already pushing out assignments for November. So I, I, I've made assignments for all of the November spots that we have, which is primarily Kent Kids Club is hosting something this weekend. And then we have some middle school stuff kicking off um, next week in a week. So we've, we've got middle school and the kids as well as some of the very early varsity stuff will start like November 30th. So the November assignments I've pushed out, so short of guys being fully eligible yet or certified, I'm pushing assignments out, but when the 20th comes around, if I see that a guy isn't certified and he's already on assignment, I'm going to take him off of it. So just get your eligibility stuff completed by the 20th. That gives you two weeks from today. Um, make sure to update Arbiter with your blocks. So block out times and days when you can't get 
uh, able to officiate so that I don't mistakenly grab you and think you're available. It'll, it just helps everybody that we don't have to, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not really available that day. Like, if, I, if you're blocked, you won't even show up as an option to me as an assigner in sidebar. Okay. Um, and then kids club stuff is underway, even though uh, the Tahoma Kids Club isn't hosting anything this season. And Kent is hosting something. They're they're hosting round robins this Saturday, and we have a crew assigned to that that we're putting together already. Um, but of course, down in Tacoma, they have like the bulk of the kids clubs. They have like 15 of them, and so all the events sort of tend to happen down there. And they're always going to ask for augmentation. So um, those of you that are uh, want to put yourself up to volunteer to help out, be uh, available to augment them on either the 11th, the 18th, or the 25th of this month. Um, come see me before we leave tonight. I'll get your name and dates that you want to make yourself available so that when Daryl A. Braun in Tacoma, the assigner down there, reaches out to me, and sometimes he doesn't reach out to me until like Wednesday or something or Thursday. Hey, you got anybody? We need three guys at Auburn and two over in Ville or whatever. I'll already know who those guys are that I can say, yeah, I have these two guys said that they're willing. What I told him is that if he's gonna, uh, if we're gonna augment them for their kids club stuff, that that we should, you know, try to be assigned to the thing that's geographically closest to us, so we don't have to go to like Dash on Island or you know University Place or sort of Yelm, like if Auburn's available, send us there. Fife, these are easy places for us to get to. <coughs> Bill, Enumclaw, those are like kind of pretty distant. So, but the thing is, what I want to emphasize is that. Because a lot of associations are having trouble with their numbers, and Tacoma has been hard hit the last couple of years, we really have to take a regional approach to, to staffing things. So WWWA south of us, Snohomish County north of us, Peninsula to the west of us, like we all just need to work together, South Sound down Olympia, to just work together to try to cover stuff. Because on certain tournament weekends, they're going to be short in one geography or another. And we borrow from people and they borrow from us and from other associations. So the thing is, when I reach out to you and say, hey, can 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 you be available to do something down in Pierce County or can you go up to Snohomish and do this thing or whatever, right? Just keep in mind that we're just trying to help the sport. And if we don't have officials, well then it just makes it harder for the they may not have a you know, they may have three guys and three mats. Or worse yet, like some of the kids' stuff, they didn't cut have officials at all at some of the stuff, so you can, but the standard nowadays is that everybody's basically wearing the gray pinstripes. I don't know if you you ran an event and anybody wearing black and white pinstripes. Do you need gray? I've got extra grays that don't have the little patches on them. Uh, I was just wondering for this Saturday. Yeah, you can. Yeah, just it's open, but you can wear that. You at the Kent School? You at, you at Kent? The Kent? Yeah. Um, I have an extra gray. You're welcome to borrow. Um, other than that, just again, accept or decline the assignments I give to you expeditiously, meaning within 48 hours. Like if, you, if, you, if you're not sure, you don't think you're going to be able to take it, then just stick on it. So I can just act on getting another guy in the slot. Like if you let it hang out there, that's what's sort of death to me is like wondering, are you going to take this or not? Like I don't want to have to reach out to you guys all the time and go, hey, uh, it's been sitting there for five days, are you going to take this or not? Like. I have to assign 800 slots in the course of the season. If I have to do a lot of that stuff, boy, it gets to be kind of a hard job. <laughs> not that my job shouldn't necessarily be hard, but not unnecessarily hard. Uh, how does the travel work when we go out of our normal region? Yeah, so the other associations would normally pay like by the mile. So if we're going to travel from like, you know, Woodville <coughs> down to Fife or something, then Tacoma should pay by the mile. Yeah, that's for us, within our association, it's a flat fee, 18 right. bucks. Yeah, he, uh, Daryl does that, and then if you go to Bashan, they pay your ferry fee. Okay. But you try to pull, or pull as much as you can. Right. And then everything, if we do go to the different counties, you end up, everything still falls into the for pay it in April, those other associations uh, don't pay differently? So if you no. officiate an event for another association, yeah. what, what will happen is this. Normally, I will use Arbor to put what's called a placeholder assignment in there. It'll say, 
like WWWOATBD is the site, meaning there ain't no site until they send, they will send you an assignment. So if I tell Daryl down in WWWOA that you're going to work for him, I will give him your information, he will put you in their arbiter group, and then they will send you an assignment that will tell you, yes, you're at Auburn High School at 9.30 a.m. or whatever. So you'll first see something from me that just says, yeah, you're going to work that Saturday at WWWOA TBD as the site from 6 a.m. to 6.05. <laughs> and the reason I do that is just so I know you're assigned. Um, and for when I produce your pay sheet at the end, it'll just show that, oh, yeah, you did a WWWOA event that day. You'll get your paycheck from them, though, and they may okay. pay you sooner than April. I usually like to pay the guys that we borrow before I pay our own guys. I just get take care of that stuff, so sometimes I'm paying them in like March. The, their check usually comes at the end of March. -ish. Yeah. Okay, no, so I just I, was figuring that out. I've had some homes in Pearson, they got, they got the checks out within like a month. They were yeah. heading up and getting it out and, and, and sending it to take care of business. Pretty I hard. won't send it out within a month. <laughs> <laughs> I don't collect until February, March, and April. So we don't so. carry that kind of budget, so. No. <laughs> All right. That everything else in the meeting is uh, training, right. which we'll get you now. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> just, just a reminder, next Monday we're at Mercer Island High School. School. He wants to go to the room. Yeah. <laughs> we're at Mercer Island High School in the wrestling room for a Mac click, uh, so we're not here. Uh, next time we'll be back here will be the 27th, I believe. And anybody who wants a drink, well, be there after the meeting. Bob, you want to load up the slides for the... It's on, uh, just get out of this one, the, the, that slide thing's already... Up. So we'll next week, can we just show up street clothes? Is that yes. What you're yes. Okay. You know, except for uh, who, who you're getting picks for um, uh, singlets. Uh, uh, yeah. Next week, yeah. singlets. Yeah. Yeah. singlets. Yeah. 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 Show up in your singlet. Next year, I'm going to be on the next one. One point of time. I don't know that I have to. Yeah. 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 Well, it's in my email then. I didn't I saw that snuff the this guy. So Damon and Bob are going to be training. Uh, and Damon's going to lead training. What's that? Damon's going to lead training. Gonna lead training. Gonna so cool. what you're going to see some here, some stuff here which you will not agree with. Okay, I'm just going to tell you that right now. There's some stuff that we're being told to train on that is just wrong. And we know it's wrong. Okay? WOA knows it's wrong, WIA knows it's wrong, but this is what the NFHS has told us to do. So this is what we're doing. When we get to the part that's wrong, you'll know it. But we don't, we're not here to debate it. Okay? Right? This is just this is training on what we need to do. We're not going to have a debate about whether we're trying to work. Alright? If you have any questions, just listen to the other coaches. Listen to the other coaches. Here, I'll put the slides for you. Do we have yeah. those handouts that we were supposed to have? Yeah. Handouts? I didn't get one either. I already gave them out. I didn't get one either. No, I mean the ones that were forthcoming, not that one. Unless they were forthcoming. Well, uh, Braden, you have some that, that, that our, uh, the WOA was sending out. We have a brand new training manual. Yeah. yeah, but it's, that's just a Word doc. So yeah, that went to the trainers yeah, already. Yeah, so <laughs> I've incorporated that into these slides. So uh, okay. Yeah. I so, thought we were all gonna get one. So it's just a just word about my you, role or our yeah, yeah. You need to pass on that training menu to everybody in this room. Um a PDF file. So they have okay. a copy. There are many parts of it that are wrong. I've sent changes to, to Weber and to Terry because I, just, I literally just got the phone with Terry walking in the door and he just said, I'm with uh, John Glover. He didn't say one word about that. There are tons of stuff that are wrong. So, okay. can we talk separately? I'll talk to John. Okay. 
So just a word about my role. Hey, I'm not telling you guys that I know this better than you. It's not about that. But uh, I, I, I think in this association, it's important for each of us to, uh, at times, to step up and to assume more roles. And that's just where I'm trying to get to currently in my position with the board. So I don't, don't be intimidated by the role I'm taking. You know, if it's something that you want to address, or you know, just do my best to you know, help be a positive influence to the training. So, with that being said, slide four. <laughs> so the the, uh, the 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 uniforms have changed. Um, the two piece uniform that we saw last year is now is now acceptable. The compression shirt, compression shirts and shorts. We saw some last year. Uh, they found this this helps wrestlers participate in the sport. Helps them be more comfortable. The compression shirt cannot cover. Uh, below the elbow, it's got to have a minimum three-inch <coughs> tail. So what I'm assuming that's the back of it, minimum three-inch tail, uh, and it may be worn under the singlet with compression shorts. Uh, compression shorts have to have a minimum four-inch inseam. I'm assuming that's how big the bottom ring is from the from the from, 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 from the nuts down. From the nuts down. down. Yeah. Okay. okay. And it uh, cannot extend below the knee, so it's got to be above the knee. It must be school issued. Uh, How do you know it's school issued? Coach gave it to me. Uh, the, 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 the school's got to issue it. The one kid just can't show up with his own uh, his own unique flair. What's that, Gary? They can be the bag and the worst matter. As long as they were designed for wrestling. They look like boxing. You know, if, uh, if they're the team colors, yeah. you'll know it's school issue, and, right. and then it's OK. But they can be like those. He's talking about the, the shirt you buy first. No, the shorts and the yeah. So the, I think what we're referring to is we can wear spandex underneath of our singlet or underneath of our compression shorts. They have to be tight fitting. You can't have loose clothing underneath your 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 uh, compression shorts or your singlet. So is this saying that you have to have compression shirt and compression shorts, or no? Have no, it's an optional uniform. If you go with the optional, yeah, can it both. still be loose like it was last year? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, the shorts. Anything you saw last year is legal except for his. But it, it says compression shorts on the slides. Why he's asking? That's why I'm at. That's what I read in the rule book also. Yeah. Yeah, but it has the rule book. In the rule book, it says the The WOA has a different interpretation on this as well than what the NFHS rule book is. Because the WOA came out with something last year that said that we could do the boxer shorts or the UFC shorts, which is not consistent with the NFHS standards. So whatever we saw last year. It's good, right? Yes. Yeah, yes. Those ones in that picture are not compression shorts. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay, because the WIA allowed them last year, and now they're saying if they allowed them last year, we allow them again this year. Even though the rule, like Christian cited, says the shorts are supposed to be compression, meaning they're tight fitting, not baggy loose. And this will probably evolve over the next couple of years. So can they just have a compression shirt and compression shorts on? If and no so issue. Okay. In lieu of the singlet or in lieu of the baggy shorts. Right. Yes. Yeah, so they're more likely going to be the same same color, same style as the singlet, but just the oh, same yeah. color. Yeah. This is compression shorts or shorts designed for less than yeah, there you go. Okay. Yeah, the important thing is that it has to be issued by the school. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, sorry to belabor, but one one more clarification. So again, if it is a school issue uniform and it's not a compression fit, uh, compression fitting shirt and not compression fitting shorts. It's still okay. No, no. The so shirt has have, to be compression. Do, do, do you remember? The shirt has to be compression. Okay. Do you remember, the shorts can go either way. Do you remember last year Jason came out with long sleeve shirts? Yeah, we pinned them. Right? Do you remember how awesome. we handled that? <laughs> we no. Long you you wouldn't have official. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember. We said, <laughs> we said, we said no. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Safety pins only. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's because they were long sleeves. Now, right. 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 Rainier Beach, were there some <clears throat> compression shirts? <laughs> yes, they were. Yeah, yes. They came to here, yeah. and the the, the they had the boxing shorts. Yeah, the boxing shorts. But I didn't think that. Chuck, okay. remember what I called it? Okay. The the simple thing is read the this is this is really elementary. Read the book. It's Article. It's it's Rule Four, Section One, Article One. It very clearly states what to be worn, how they're supposed to wear it. Like everybody said, what they wore last year except for the long sleeve shirts, 
if they warm last year, they're legal this year. It also has other requirements regarding it's a compression short or wrestling sh or shorts designed or manufactured for wrestling. It's really important. There's a big difference between that. Okay, so just just read it and understand it, and it's real straightforward. Okay. Right. Thank you. Okay. I mean, I, I hate, so we don't belabor it. It's yes. it's right here. It's real simple. Yep. And, and again, guys, any questions I, next week? Be be sure you ask them. <clears throat> yeah. And I'm you know and our role with this rule review is not to teach you the rules in the rule book. It's your responsibility to read your rules and to know your rules. This is really just highlighting the rules and highlighting some focus points here. So next to uh, rule 401. Dan, I'm sorry to interrupt. Oh, okay, Chuck, sorry to labor. But one of the other things <laughs> that we've talked about is that we all need to be on the same page yes. and consistent with how we all are applying the rule. Okay, and so if there are some of us that don't, you know, that don't have a hundred percent clear understanding, let's make sure we do. Okay, because we don't want to get to a match and well, well, Grogan, he, he let us wrestle with those last, last week, and, and Eric is saying, well, guess what? Grogan was wrong, and and, and part of what you're seeing is that so last year Washington State was the only state that had the two-piece uniform, and so we were the pilot state. Well, now it's an NFHS rule, so they're. The NFHS is going through the same thing that Washington State went through last year. So next year, they'll iron these details out. Mm -hmm. so. All right, so can, can anybody tell me what a wrestling short designed for wrestling looks like? Yes. School issue. Yes. Yes. If it's school, uh, school issue. issue. <laughs> <laughs> we know that. Correct. Yeah, four inches. The Period. Not below no, the knee. They, so, no. The NFHS states that they have to be a course school issue. They are tight fitting shorts with a tight fitting example arm under armor shirt. It has to be tight fitting, cannot go past the yeah, elbow, well, right? Four inches down. Right. Okay. The now problem. here's here's the, here's the problem that I was going to go yes. over in the process of the punk that I was going to go over as the weigh-ins is once we ask the coaches. Is this school issue? And he says yes. That's it. We're done. And we are, it we, exceeds we, the knees, or it's not. It goes past the knees or, knees or past the elbows. We are done asking questions. Doesn't matter what color it is, because once we're asking the coach that question, he's telling us that there's right. school issue. Or how baggy the shorts are. Correct. Right. Because we just said that our state is permitting the the Box. non. Compression right. shorts. Or boxing shorts, yes. Yeah. Right, okay. And, and so does this, the NFHS allows the baggy shorts. Mm -hmm. it, it's <coughs> there. Okay. All right. Yes, I know. It, it just says designed for the next It says designed for wrestling. Yes. <laughs> All right. So, 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 this, so here's a first case case scenario as a wrestler it appears wearing the tight fitting compression shirt, loose fitting shorts. Uh, Loose fitting shorts designed for wrestling with loose fitting boxer shorts that extend below the inseam but above the knees. So we have a scenario here, a school issued uniform, uh, boxer shorts hanging out the bottom. What do we do? We, we stop the, we, if, well first of all, ideally we want to catch it ahead of time before the wrestling starts, but we want to stop, penalize, and then have a 90 second injury time for that wrestler to uh, remove those boxer yeah, shorts. Quick. Yeah. 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 Yeah, not on the mat. <laughs> so, okay, uh, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so here's another one. Uh, Russell B appears in the mat wearing tight fitting brushes, shorts tucked into full length tights with stirrups. Full length tights with stirrups. He's got a shirt on. So yeah, brush and shirt and tights. tights. That's it. No seam. No seam. No, no shorts. Shorts. Okay. Okay. I see. So, so the tights are okay. They just have to be under a seam. They're not. But wrestler B would be penalized and have 90, 90 seconds to go put on a singlet or compression shorts. Does that make sense? So the stirrups are okay. We just have to have a uniform over top of the long-legged stirrups. You've always had to have stirrups. But in in that case, that is not a complete uniform, right? Because that is not tights with a compression shirt is not a full uniform. Either has to be shirt, the shirt with the shorts, singlet by itself, singlet with the tights, or the shirt, the shorts, and the tights. The, the tights by themselves without the shorts or the singlet is not a complete uniform. 
Okay, moving on. Yeah. Okay, so Russ will be appears on the mat. He's wearing a tight fitting short sleeve compression shirt under the singlet. This is legal. And then con contestants may wear a tight fitting short sleeve compression shirt under the singlet. It complies right. in the uniform. You used to have to have a reason. Now they don't have to have a reason. Right. That's exactly. yeah. So weigh-ins. Uh, if an athlete misses the first weigh-in, in other words, I step on the scale, I'm a point one pound over or under. Or under, thank you, or under. I can step off the scale, I can try again, I can try it on another scale, but I cannot do anything to change or alter my weight. You cannot try it on the un another scale unless you're at a tournament. Make sure you know the difference. If you're dual meet, you have one scale, it's the official scale, you weigh in on it, step off. In, in a double dual, we might have two scales. They can use the Any scale that's in use for the, the official weigh-in, they would have the opportunity to use that scale. And it's immediate. Yeah, so he steps on, if he's over, he gets one more chance on that scale, and then he gets one chance on any other scale that is in, in use for the official weigh-in. If there are no others, that's the end of it. If there's another one, he gets one chance on that. And at state, there are 14 of them. At state, you may have a kid going down the line, all 14 scales. And do. So I got the kid, he got the, the hair that we say needs to be cut. <clears throat> but we, we have in the past that have cut and have to weigh in. Yeah. yeah, but that doesn't affect his weight. That affects well, his well, weight. No. So if he's, if he's at that 10th pound under, yeah. there, but we've already triggered him for the hair being below here. He would not be allowed to cut his hair at that moment. Right. Yeah. He would have to wait until he weighs in to cut his hair. Yeah. Pass his way in. He doesn't make weight, doesn't have to cut his hair. He can cut it before <laughs> he weighs in. Yes. Yes. That doesn't mean that he can't weigh in. But if he That's misses different. his weight, he yeah. cannot he do anything cut. between jumping okay. on the scale and jumping on so another us, scale. Us telling him he has to cut his hair is irrelevant. You to better the cut it before he Correct. Comes Correct. For the weigh in itself. Yeah. Okay. So then this next case case look, we'll say right. situation A is wearing a, a, a suitable garment with a pair of shorts. She doesn't make weight on the first attempt, steps off the scale, and removes the shorts with, again, suitable undershorts. Uh, to, for the second attempt, wrestler A, she would not be able to remove the shorts to, to she make she. weight. He or she. He, he or she. she. <laughs> She's using the general universal pronoun. We say he so he much. This one's a gal. So doesn't a guy, can a guy weigh in in the legal undergarment? Yes, but if he's wearing, this was, if he's wearing shorts over the legal undergarment, yeah. Once he steps on the scale with the shorts on, he can't take them off. Yeah. Just like socks. He can't step he's, on the scale. He's only he supposed to only weigh in in the legal undergarments. Step on the scale. Okay, so, no, okay. so to cut this short, there are no more legal undergarments in the state of Washington. Everybody's going to weigh in in their singlet. Oh. Okay, that's maybe. coming. Yeah. So. Yes. But the main point is that they are <laughs> not allowed to alter their forward. weight in any way after they've stepped on the scale. This if is I, great. If I had underwear with basketball shorts on and I go okay that's that's fine and then he steps on the scale oh I'm a tenth over yeah. no 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 <laughs> you you are weighing into that again okay well the point right there is you can't really weigh with those anyway right but this no, is an okay. NFHS issued yes okay. so okay so, so the, the big rule change here is I can't drink a glass of water because last year we couldn't we couldn't spit between weigh-ins between weighing this this year you can't yeah. do anything can't be weighted. Well, okay. <coughs> okay. All right. Now so let's get to the interesting. Okay. So this is a regarding falls near falls. The shoulder or scapula of the defensive wrestler no longer must be in balance to earn a fall. Wrestling should continue if the offensive wrestler's supporting points remain in bounds and no body part of the defensive wrestler goes off the mat. Uh, unless and this so the rule says. Unless any part of the shoulders or both capital of the defensive roster is inbounds, was eliminated. If wrestling is continued during a match, near falls and falls will be awarded, earned, regardless of the out of bounds line. So if I'm the pinning wrestler, both my supporting points are inbounds, and the wrestler B scapula is out of bounds, I'm still earning near fall points, or I can still go for the fall. If my Supporting <coughs> points are in bounds. So the ones that screwed off the, on their back, then they, we can pin them. Yeah, yes. no more Taco Bell. Yes. Okay. <laughs> cool. All right. Okay. But if the defensive wrestler throws his foot and it hits the wood, 
Then you stop. Yeah. Well, there's chairs in the corner. If a, there we go. Yeah. This is just the corner. There's a wall. The toes are the back. Uh, you know, of course, of course, if I'm the offensive wrestler and I'm, I have the and one of my supporting points goes out of bounds, and of course we're both out of bounds. The, the right. first slide yeah. was sounded complicated. The second one clarifies it. Yes, it that's why I changed it. Yes. It's while the supporting points of either wrestler are in bounds. So <coughs> one of them inbound, <coughs> and you can get the points near fall or the pin. But yep. if they're both out, no. That's right. Yeah. The other thing is, when the wrestler's on his back, his supporting points are his shoulders. So if his, you know, if his, if his hips are still in, and the other guy's, you know, knees are still in, uh, but then his shoulders are, are, well, one guy's in, but if his hips are in, the other guy's out, we have some sample examples. Yeah, we can clarify this. Okay. You have the pictures from yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. The, the key concept might be hitting on is if they're allowed to keep wrestling, a guy can get pinned or give up an air ball. Again, that's all you need to remember. But if your shoulders are out of bounds and you're being pinned, how do we call a pin? That's you still be called pin. So you're blowing your whistle and hitting the metal ball. So the wrestler knows me as in So as long as wrestling is allowed to continue. So just to get pinned. Just the way it was, the way it used to be. Uh, the, the scapula, one of the scapulas go out of bounds, we count, and then when the scapula go out of bounds, we yeah, stop the near fall count. Just, just, this is here we still count. Did you have a question back there? Those are two of the pictures. Nope. Yeah. Okay. Pictures will so, say a lot. So, uh, 5, 11, 5, you see the, the supporting points of the... David, move out of the way of the screen for these The guys. pinning wrestler are still in bounds. Both scapula of the defensive wrestler are out of bounds, but we're still earning near fall points or we're still earning a, new, a fall. So what's the supporting points for the offensive wrestler here? Sits. 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 Or or yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. 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 But on <coughs> Whatever they are, they're in bounds. If his butt is outside the lines, but it's off the mat, then it's his feet, right? What, we'll get there, all right? Let's just... Here's the next one. So yeah. in this scenario, we can probably all agree that the, the, the offensive wrestler's supporting point is still his buttocks. It's still within the inbounds line. We have one wrestler with supporting points inbounds. We are in bounds. We can't continue to earn your fall points. Next slide. The scapula... Both scapulas of the defensive or getting pinned wrestler are inbounds, just barely, but inbounds. The uh, buttocks of the offensive wrestler is out of bounds, but because we have one wrestler with both scapula inbounds, we're still in bounds. We can still go. This would have been the same as last year. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Right. That's, that's the charging points are his scapulas. Yeah, this this is no different from last year. Okay, next slide. Okay. What if the bottom wrestler's left scapula moves a little bit up past that, past the edge of that orange line, the outside the edge of that orange line? He's still right. in balance because both scap, both scapula counts as they're they're using the ones. It's like a one um, supporting point. So if, if one of his shoulders is in bounds, he's in bounds. Uh, no, no. no. Per the clinic, both. both shoulders can be in bounds. Yeah. Per, per the clinic, though, it, it shows you something different. So I, that, did you be taking the rules clinic? I did. I don't recall. It was that, that was that, another question. That was that's another a good question, question, but I think in the, the explanation. Do I say that's that's how they describe the rules clinic? Huh? Uh, I'll go back to the center. Center. Take it again. Yeah, but but in this explanation, why that's not why that wouldn't be is when one of those scapula goes beyond that or the edge of that orange line. That supporting point is now outside of the circle, therefore one supporting point is outside of one wrestler. Both supporting points are outside of the offensive wrestler. There we have the That's same thing. Two. One in, one out, and both out, we're out of bounds. Agree? Okay. <coughs> okay. The next slide here. Uh, so wrestlers are out of bounds because toes are not supporting points down on the mat. Okay, so this is a scenario, the supporting points of the top of the defensive wrestler, both scapular are obviously outside of the circle. The supporting points of the offensive wrestler is a uh, is, is, is or can't be the toes. Right. That would be a change. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. Also, in this photo, the defensive wrestler is the, the defensive wrestler is ham hampered by being on the edge of the mat. Okay, so if he's at risk of going off the edge, outside the mat, 
You need to stop it anyway. If his foot comes off. Yeah. Well, if he were to straighten out, his foot would come off. Right. Him. And if he doesn't, but until he's he does, still alive. He's, he's, on. he's still alive. Here. But this is up because the, up because the supporting points, yeah. if the rest one red, is out of bounds. Yeah. Right. Yes. That's why this one's out. Yes. Right. Next. Okay. And you're stopping it. I mean, you're yes. not letting it continue. Right? Yes. Right. Yeah. Oh, so right there. Take, so no takedown, no. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Uh, the last, the, the last slide, we're out of bounds. Dangerous. We're out of bounds. The top wrestler's on his toes. The last slide, we're both out of bounds. Yeah. Two and out. The uh, this slide here is saying, uh, again, the supporting points of the defensive wrestler out of bounds. The supporting points, the knees of the top wrestler are in bounds, therefore two supporting points of one wrestler in bounds, we're still in bounds. So Everybody on his toes? Yeah. Anything but toes. Well, now when that wrestler goes up to their his toes, or pressures, now toes cannot be supporting points, we're out of bounds. This is my what I was talking about earlier. Every coach says, get off your knees. When he gets off his knees, please don't. Okay. From a pinning situation. No, we are bouncing. Stop it. Restart it. Anytime he gets to that position, the, the, out. Take the out. toes are not considered supporting points in that position. Not bothering. Now we could spend two hours discussing this slide. I understand. And, and here they are side by side. It's literally the same photo. The kid just lowered his knees, right? So in one he's out, in the other he's in. It says rule book page 18 and 19. Uh, I don't remember. Well, it's going to be under supporting uh, points. It'll be clearly defined under supporting points. Yeah, your toes are not supporting points, your knees are. So, so this is defined. supporting points must touch the mat. They're supporting points. Yeah. 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 So this is clearly yeah. problematic. Everybody knows it. When I, you know, and we're going to be down there. We're going to be counting the airfall. How are we going to know what your knees are, right? Yeah. So. Um, His knees are up. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 So anyway, it is what it is. Should we be out of bounds if we're on the floor? <laughs> uh, you might get it. Uh, 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 okay, so when starting the wrestlers in the down position, Wait, any more questions about the this new rule? So as soon as the knees come up in that picture, we stop <coughs> and we go back to the center, and if it was a takedown, <coughs> and, and the goal here is basically we want to reward the offensive wrestler and give him the pin. And I recommend, especially for the first couple weeks when you're doing, you're talking to your coaches. At dual meets, and maybe what make a handout. You can bring these photos and say, "Hey, this is this is it doesn't make any sense, but this is what we're calling." So okay. here's here's the thing to remember, right? Be clear on the definition of supporting points, and then apply the definition of supporting points when you apply the definitions of things like take down and near fall, in balance, out of balance. These are separate things, okay? But you have to be clear about what are considered supporting points in this picture. What their NFHS is telling you is the, the, these do not constitute the supporting points for the wrestler. So either they're saying he his supporting points must be his elbows or where you know where, whatever chest. like his weight from his chest, or if they're not saying those are supporting points, then they're saying he doesn't have any supporting <coughs> points that count, and therefore nobody has any supporting points in. It's one well, or the other. That's the only one that they can say because by clear definition of, of supporting points, it's other than what you're holding your opponent. Correct, but he's elbows down on the mat, so he's like this. So that's why either this is, they consider this as supporting points, or they say he has none. Because we just have to be clear about what, what supporting points are. When he's down on his knees, we know that those bear the majority of his weight. That's his supporting, his supporting points are the knees, okay? But in this situation, they're not clear, and the NFHS would do this on a big service, and they say, the reason he is out of balance is because his supporting points are his elbows, and they are out, and his shoulders are his supporting points, and they are out, therefore, we are all out. And the reason we're in here is because his supporting points are his knees, his supporting points are his back, he's still in balance, wrestle on, count, <laughs> so careful. Bob is going to go Bob is gonna go to the uh, North Puget Sound League meeting on Wednesday, I'm going to go to the Kinko a league meeting on Wednesday to talk about specifically all well, all rule changes, but specifically this one, so that the coaches are not surprised when this happens during the season. My, my understanding is the coaches, and correct me coaches if, if I'm wrong on this, my understanding is coaches have to take the same clinic as we're taking. This is clearly defined in the WOA clinic explanation, and Todd Stordahl, as he's narrating it, said he very makes it very clear that this, the reason for this is this is not a collegiate, if this was a collegiate match, then it would be legal 
But so any coach that says they don't know about this or haven't heard about this has not taken that clinic because he makes it very clear in, uh, in that clinic. It, yeah, we, we know how well they go into the clinic. No, but so just, I'm just well, saying. It's, it's it's required. Required. I understand it's required. It's required. It's it's required. It doesn't mean they pay attention. So, it's a little, it's a little about preventative But, but preventive, yeah. preventive officiating before the meet starts. Telling the kids, stay on your knees. Well. You come off your knees in a pinning situation, out of bounds. Yes. We're going to have to stop right. that. Moving on. Uh, uh, when starting the wrestlers in the down position, a referee shall be in front station to stationary and at an angle to the contestants. The referee shall also establish eye contact with the scores table, uh, the situation. The wrestlers have chosen to start the second period in the down position. The referee moves behind the wrestlers to start the match. So it now the, rep, the book specifically says wrestlers have got to be right there, and I want to be at an angle so I can appropriately... Uh, digest the situation. You, want you can't say, start it from behind. You can't start from behind. You want to be the offensive wrestler. You want to be to the open side so you can see where that guy's knee is. Exactly. Right. And see the palm on the belly. Right. Yeah, exactly. Plus you can also see you. That's it. I hope everybody heard that because I still see a lot of guys that are still up out front, but they're on the near side rather than the far side. Well, a lot of kids go back and forth sometimes. But no more, more then you then you jump over. Yeah, no more lining up. You can't move. No more lining up head on the wrestlers. Yeah. No, well, no that's not what that says. You can still do that. No, yeah. it's and telling then, you to be off to the side. You'd be off to the side a little bit. It so does you can see that. So you can see the hand around the waist and the knee say that. in the buttocks. The <laughs> other thing <laughs> is that they don't say in there, but it's in, the is in the picture, is that the guy isn't so far out. We had a number of guys down at state last year would go all the way out to the out-of-bounds line to start the match. You don't want to be out there. The kids have to wait forever for you to do that. You can't see as well, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, errors. Used to be uh, at the end of the period, we have to catch an error before the end of the period. Uh, if it moves on to the second, the next period, errors squashed. This is uh, next match, not next period. Error correction now, the errors by the time people official score or referee must be corrected prior to the offended contestant leaving the mat area and before the start of the next match on the mat, if any additional wrestling is necessary. If additional wrestling is not necessary, the error may be corrected as long as the offender contestant or coach remains in the mat area after the match has concluded and before the start of the next match on that mat. So that means if we have a question about whether or not the two points in the first period were given to a green wrestler, and it's at the end of the sudden death period, those, those, that mistake can now be corrected, even if it was all the way back from the first period. Any questions? Uh, that was a clerical error. <coughs> but the mispositioning or something like that. that time. You, yeah. yeah. The reason behind this rule, right, is that Again, it's common sense and it's a logistical thing. And at some point, the match is over and the result is final. <laughs> like we can't like come back an hour and a half later and go, you know what? There was a mistake on that match. Like so, it's just telling us you got to catch this before the next match begins on that mat. All right. Or if more wrestling has to happen, the guy that's making the protest or the offended has to stick around. So we don't go. Okay, yeah, we need. Where's that guy now? Tell you to <laughs> stay on the mat. off to steak and shake. <laughs> He's like, watch he thought video. he was eliminated. He's gone. Like, when I read this, I saw it as this, the athlete thinks there's a mistake, and the athlete is asking us to correct the score. It could Can be. the kids ask us that, or does it have to be the coach? It could be either. Again, this goes back to, in your role as an official, if someone raises a question and there's a doubt in your mind, then check it out. Right, <laughs> I, I don't have a problem if with that. If the kid says, I, I want, really want, no, you actually lost 12 nothing. It wasn't. It, there's no question here. <laughs> And so next slide, the situation is the coach of team A realizes his team should have won the previous match at 106. The official scorekeeper did not award his wrestler the two points. The coach brings the scoring error to the attention of the referee during the 113 pound match. Can this be corrected? Matches must be corrected prior to the start of that 113 pound match. Wait a minute, it said if no wrestling is required, but uh, before the next match starts. That's when matches already started. Again, there has to be a cutoff. We're, we're in the first 10 seconds of the 113 pound match, and now the coach is saying, wait a second, after his manager's viewing the video, 
Wait a second, that score should have been 10 to 7. The rule is defining a cutoff, and the cutoff is we cannot correct it after the next match starts. Too bad, so sad. You needed to catch it. score. Yes, you needed to catch that before we started that. We moved on. It's just like in football, the game's all ended on Saturday. We're not allowed on Friday. You, go, you know what? It was really fourth down on that play, and they didn't get the first down. Like, that game, you should overturn the result now. Okay, no, right, sorry. Right. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I just read that bottom Monday morning. I Monday morning. Monday morning. Okay. Uh, the straight back salto or shoe play are dangerous regards of what body part hits the mat first. The front flip or hurdle from the neutral position uh, is also illegal. Uh, these are very dangerous moves, and specifically, we're saying these aren't illegal no matter what part of the body hits. So no jumping over, no flips, no flying squirrels, no souplés. Any questions? No salt. Salt. Does, know, does everybody know what he's talking about when he's talking about the squirrel or the hurdle? <clears throat> and there, these are all viewable. There's a lot of video. Oh wait, there's videos coming up. Yes. Okay. Uh, so the straight. Okay. Next slide. I did. Is this the next slide? Uh -huh. Okay. Straight back salto are dangerous. The referee penalizes wrestler A for an illegal hold. For executing a straight back suplex, the coach of wrestler A informs the referee that wrestler B's shoulder landed on the mat first, not his head, and there should be no penalty. However, that move, no matter what part of the body hits, is illegal. So essentially, no no flipping, tumbling your opponent over you, or no taking your body and flipping and tumbling over your opponent. Yeah, so this is going to be where the guys just do the little yeah. straight back means straight back. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. guy does. <laughs> does this, that's yeah. not straight back. Right. Straight, and it doesn't matter whether or not he, his opponent hits his head first. If this guy goes straight back, yeah. that's illegal. But if he goes and turns, well, that's not straight back. Right. So, so this situation says that both wrestlers are neutral. Wrestlers B, B is behind with two points and 15 seconds ago, so he executes a flying squirrel. He jumps over his opponent's head, grabs her on his waist upside down, and then comes back around and, and swings his wrestler over top of him for two points. That's illegal. I think uh, Jordan Burroughs did it two, three years ago and hit the uh, YouTube as a phenomenon. Is this legal? No. Oh. No. He's on that's, his knees. That's legal. He's on He's his knees. It's fine. They're not neutral. Really? <laughs> So, it just says it's illegal. It only said front flips. Yeah. So, it says standing backflips. It's not any backflips. It's a standing backflip. It's what came up because of the Schultz brothers. They used to do a standing backflip. Field. Can you still like cartwheel around people? <laughs> it's not a flip. Yeah, well, it's not a flip. Right? This is a flying squirrel, but handled poorly. Oh, Ouch. Crash. Okay, that's what we do. We don't have to watch the whole thing. It was pretty good. So make sure you call it before it happens. But yeah. Yeah. Christian is hitting on the right thing, which is it's the standing portion of it that makes it illegal. When they're down on the mat, like that video show where the defensive guy just sort of popped over from his knees over the guy, they're not standing. That's that isn't the illegal per the rule. It could be dangerous, it could be you make it gets careless, whatever, so so but it's not illegal strictly by the rule. So we'll, we'll allow it this Saturday then? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it could be, yeah. <laughs> okay. What are you talking about? That was illegal. So, uh, so if you remember, if you recall, last the old way of doing things, wrestler stands up, you have five seconds to return the wrestler, otherwise it's stalling for the, the, the offensive wrestler when there, there's a stand-up. Now, this year, the changes, it is stalling when the contestant is in the advantage position, Stays behind the opponent while on his or her feet, making no attempt to bring the opponent to the mat. So, I'll, I'll call it in a second. So again, if I'm the bottom wrestler, I stand up, and I'm, I'm behind, I'm the top wrestler, I'm trying this way, I'm trying this way, I'm trying this way, 12 seconds go by, 15 seconds, but I'm still trying to get this top guy back down. There's no stalling. There's not that automatic five seconds and then we're stalling because we didn't return him. Now it's when the it's when the top or the offensive wrestler stops making an attempt and is just hanging on, that's when it's stalling. So we have a question, Christian. No, I have a comment. It's never been five seconds. Okay. Okay. 
It's yeah. never. That's only when you pin the butt heel to the butt right. when they're broken down. That's the only time that that's it's right. a straight call right. for five seconds. It's always been the rule that they have to make an attempt to return to the right. back. Right. This is clearly just going ahead and codifying it, making it a little stronger. It says, really, an attempt to re return them. So if he's stepping in front, if he's doing something that makes it look like he's trying to return to the mat, he has to make a, a bona fide attempt. He can't just be feigning to return him to the mat. He actually makes a bona fide attempt. And that's your discretion to call as to whether or not he's returning him to the mat. That's where uh, preventive efficient, hey, work to return him to the mat, right? Okay. That, that, that's where you're going to be trying to talk him up. Hey, improve your position. Okay. Yeah, improve your position. Hey, there we go. Improve your position. That's, that's okay. okay. That's still coaching. Improve your position right now. Well, both guys got to improve their position. Improve their position. Yeah, position doesn't cost to anybody. Just just okay. Tell the one guy improve your position. Okay. So, it's a good point. Point one thing. Um, weigh-ins. All wrestlers need to weigh in in uniform on no shoes or no socks. Okay, so you remember, you remember last year, at the very beginning of the season, we were told to weigh in the girls. Which in we hadn't been doing before. In uniform. And we were, they were told they had to be wearing their uniforms. So the boys had a slight weight advantage. <clears throat> so this is an attempt to address that uh, inequity. Um, no weight allowance for the uniforms. What if they're not wrestling a girl? Doesn't matter. Uh, uh, Still with the single. Clarification before you guys wait for it. Or uniform. Uniform might be. We didn't do a uh, handle the same way we did last year. Girls get weighted separately. Are they doing that separately? Yes, no. Right. Yes, we are. That's not what Terry told me. Terry, Eric, I tell you, I just got off the phone with John Weber and Terry before I clarified that before I walked in the room. We are doing separate weights. Okay, the clinic that I took today said in the same room if possible. So you guys, Terry, John both said to me, we highly recommend, and I will call Terry on the way home again, I highly recommend that you use separate ways. So the training for all officials in the state in the clinic is in the same room. Okay, well, I'm telling tell you. Right. Well, we'll so, okay. Yeah, this, this will be something, I think this will be something that will shape into something. They have, way in their, the they have to weigh in their uniforms then. Yeah. Well, well, the the as officials, we do it yes. separately with the women administrator and the administrator. Mm -hmm. So have they been with the parent and weights on Why wouldn't they just go together? It seems better to me to have them all together. Yeah. Well, and here's why. Because they're conducting the weigh ins in the locker room. There's two reasons. Auxiliary gym. Most places don't have an auxiliary gym. Second of all, is that they, they want to have, because the girls, most girls are not wrestling boys, so they have to have a separate way. Okay. So I'm telling you what the clinic says. So, the clinic. So that's the, there are people who are in this association who aren't in this room tonight, that's what they're going to hear. So. I will have Jerry call you. Yeah. Tell me have to have to have to have some kind of correction, all right? So obviously we still have some, some incongruency, incongruency. Yes. So, just, you know, this, will, this is understood. I'm um, sure we'll get a more uh, concrete explanation. It, so, I mean, if, if we're following the NFHS rules, it says it says that contestants of the same gender, everything says to the same gender. So, it, it's clear that we need to have clarification before our first weigh-in. We're going to be doing something next week. Let's make sure we yes. get clarification yes. before next week. Okay. Gary? Gary, this is up to the administrator, I think. But but as far as the, they can just drop their straps if they have singlet, but if they have the compression shirt. The girls are not to drop their straps. No, but right. right, the girls can't drop their straps. And the boys are The guys can wear their singlet up and just, okay, this is just exactly right. Right. But if they have a compression shirt, they'll have to take it. Well, okay, okay. clarification. It tells. No strap. Okay, so, uh, so according to the information Harris received, it's permissible to have girls and boys in together. Uh, if girls win separately, make sure to have another adult preferably a female present. We'll Never find yourself alone in a room with young girls. We'll come back to this and get a clarification on it. And the last, the last, the last thing there. <coughs> don't worry about it. We'll, we'll come, come back. back. I don't remember what yeah. we We'll come back and get a clarification on it. Okay. Padded gear, the padded headgear. The NFA's Jess has authorized use of padded helmet type of gear. The device was presented to NFA Jess a couple of years ago, but they denied it because of the hard plastic components the company has redesigned and has padding to fit the requirements. This will be covered on the online clinic. I think we're referring to the headbutt pad. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, a clarification on the head on the headgear that the headgear had to be rigid and padded. 
Does that make that headgear with the hard plastic ear cuffs illegal? Uh, the WIA says no. If the headgear was from 2015 to 16, it would be legal in 1617. Uh, that interpretation has not changed, so the headgear that was legal last year is legal this year. Got it? No. So basically, you're saying that if it's got that hard headbutt thing, that's not okay unless it's covered by something, but if it's over the ears, it's okay. Yeah, that's what they're saying. Because what they, the reason they're saying that is because some schools buy the headgear. The hardship on the schools. To yes, and they, they have budgets, so they're giving them a couple years to get the budget together to replace those really hard cliff keen, you know, with the hard plastic things here that aren't padded. But they had always said that that thing with the the headbutt plate or whatever was not, you know, legal in Washington yeah, or by yeah. NFHS. Oh, so yeah. that's why. Yeah. It's a weird sort of brand. We like to call it a forehead protector. <laughs> <laughs> so some other situations we want you to think about here. Uh, during the pre-meet toss, Team A wrestler uh, sends their wrestler to the score table first. Team B reports first and then proceeds to the 10-foot circle. But then Team A decides that they want a different wrestler out there. The ruling is because Team B's wrestler did not report in the proper sequence, he can be replaced by an eligible. One, one thing I want to add change. to that scenario, just so basically the, the, if the guy who's not supposed to report first comes out and reports first, he can be replaced. The one caveat I would say for us as officials is if that guy comes out and you penalize him for something, He's stuck there. The match has started with him involved. <laughs> so if he comes out and he, oh, you he, he don't have his shoelaces secured, that's that's a technical violation at one point, injury time, oh, I want to replace that guy now. <laughs> nope. Because <laughs> now you're behind one nothing, and he's in the match. You want to take him off the mat, you lose. Like so he's in the match now. The recommendation would be don't penalize the shoelaces until you got both guys out there. <laughs> no, to either just one. penalize them when you see them. It's too bad for them for sending a knucklehead on that. Like, well, just you, do your job. You already asked the coach if it's yeah. properly secured anyway. Just if the guy, once the, if he does something that cause you to put something in the scoreboard, on the scoreboard, he's committed now. Yep, Bob, the, just, just to clarify, once they checked in officially, yeah. Then they can't check them off. In the right once they check in officially. No. Yeah, but officially no. means in the right order. Right. It, no, right once order. they they no, got no, it. No, that's now wrong. The rule says in Wait, wait, order. wait. I know the rule. Thank you very much. I wrote the rule. I'm not. Actually. I'm not saying. No, you're wrong. Wrong. Bob, Bob, I never said you were wrong. Somebody said I was wrong, and I was just yeah. correcting it. I know what I'm talking about. Once we they checked in correctly. Once yeah. they checked in and they have now stepped on the mat, it's their match. But in proper that's what you're saying. It, if they come off the mat, then you can pe you, then you can penalize them for not for being on the mat when they're not supposed to be. I think there's a difference, the point I think about there's the a difference between order. checking yeah. in at the table and actually stepping saying. on the mat. Right. Yeah. So once you step on they, the mat, right. Once they step on the mat, but they can First check thing, in. Each I would other. agree with you that there's like they can take it too far, but that's not what the rule would do to them. Like in your scenario, when B steps on the mat, if he He's not committed because he wasn't the first one that was supposed to be out there in the first place. And if the A checks in, the coach can now say, hey, come off, Damon. Right. Okay, Ryan, go on in. Go check in. Right? So they can still do that even though he stepped in the middle of the mat. He was like acting like he was about to wrestle. Right. But, but your rule, as you said, if, that you proposed and was accepted, mm -hmm. is once properly checked in. Once they properly checked in, then the meet, the match has started. Yes. It does not start until they properly check in. Correct. Right? So if they step on the mat, not properly checked in, they could be penalized a point for bench decorum rules. Uh, no. No, no, no. no. Okay. But if they step on the mat and, and do some other violation, they again. They have started the match now, even though their intention was. Well, I was going to pull. They were too late. He, he got penalized. All right. So we can. Yeah. So so just and just for you young guys, just to let you know what we're talking about. There's a disc flip. If I win choice, I also should check my wrestler in first. If I 
Which choice? Which choice? Which choice? Which choice? Which choice? And that also should rotate. Most right. wrestlers just go up and check their table, and most coaches have, they don't really follow that. But you will have some schools who will be playing with weight classes. Yes. Yeah. Some coaches will do that, and I learned a real hard lesson with it. And yeah. They never let my kids step on the mat if it wasn't our turn. I'd stand for them up there. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Put your guy yeah. out. I yeah. have a choice. Yeah. Yeah. Here's yeah. the situation both wrestlers shoot for a takedown at the same time, butt heads, no. but both wrestlers are injured and require injury time. Which wrestler gets injury time? Both yeah. wrestlers get injury time. Yeah. I'm just going to weigh in. There is yeah. no precedent whatsoever for this in the NFHS. As a matter of fact, the opposite is the precedent. You yeah. only run one clock at a time. And there's a clear case example. Wrestler A is injured. We start injury clock. Then we see wrestler B bleeding. We stop the injury clock. And now we start the blood clock. But that's only for blood time. No, that's no, no. Understanding. But that, the reason is because we never run two clocks. Never. Never, ever. That's Find the, me a precedent. No, that's the NFH. Find me a precedent. That, that's, that, Find me a precedent for that somewhere. Rule super, blood okay. supersedes everything. After Bob raised this issue, I also asked Terry that. And Terry said that what we received from the NFHS is correct. So, what did well, you that's where did two, this come from? Different, I said no. Blood, that's that's two different match. questions. With, is there two injury times versus a blood time over seeding injury time? Those are two different They're not required to have two blood clocks. <coughs> so, I, I, I'll get clarification on that one. But it's simultaneous. It's, but it, if you go back to it, it says simultaneous, does it not? Yes. So, you want a clock. So I'm just telling you, there's no precedent for it. Fortunately, this is the first period, so precedent. we still have <laughs> one clock. <laughs> one clock's running, it's the first period. Nobody's taking injury time yet. What if there's only one uh, stopwatch? It's the first period. Well, well, the start start what if there's only one stopwatch? The guy at the table only has one watch. So you can track them from both right. rows. Right. We'll get back That's why you don't do this. Right. Right. Moving on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one last comment. Is there a question? No, it's a comment. Then no comment. Let him take his time. Make a quick comment. You can no, say no, that no, you no. only have one one stopwatch, but 99% of every person in the stands has a stopwatch, and it happens to be yeah. on a phone. And only okay. one person is the time. Okay. okay, situation. Wrestler A has wrestler B in an ear fall situation, and the referee has reached a five count. Wrestler B grabs the ear guard of wrestler A, but is unsuccessful in getting out of the near fall. Wrestler B, while in the near fall situation, begins to bleed, and the referee stops the match. How many points will wrestler A receive? Who thinks they got it? This was a rule change from last year. We have four points. Four points for the near pole and one oh, point. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, We're learning. He's a practice. Look at coming up with Okay, so the coach of the coach of the the coach of team A requests a conference with the referee at the scores table to question the score of the match. The coach questions if the referee awarded two or three points in that near fall. What's the penalty for the coach questioning the referee? There is no penalty because the coach who questioned the official at the score table is actually clarifying the score of the match. Provided the clarification does not interrupt the flow of the match, such clarifications can and should be asked from the bench corner and could be addressed on the mat within one or two words. No coach, that was two, that was a two takedown on the count of the three seconds. Okay, Russell, we're back to center. But if the coach questions why the referee only scored two points, not three, or otherwise halts the match for a substantial amount of time, like 15 or 30 seconds, then the coach should be charged a misconduct penalty for questioning the judgment of the referee or or a uh, unsportsmanlike conduct. Well, depending. Yeah. Just like, ask him if he wants a conference. Yeah. He asked, well, was that a two point in your phone? You go, no. Wait a second. Okay, would you like to have a conference? No. If he does, then issue a misconduct if you don't change it. And it's a coach's mouse misconduct, not an unsupported mouse. Well, he didn't right. ask for a change, so he's asking was it a two or a three. There's yeah, a and you just said no. It's it's player player question every time. He didn't stop it. He didn't so have to go don't to the don't play play question. Question judgment. Judgment. Yeah. Question judgment would be in the sports one kind. Question judgment. <coughs> well, no. Coach's misconduct is one thing. Unsportsmanlike conduct is another. Yeah. Coach's misconduct to get a warning on the first one. Yeah. That's unsportsmanlike like acts would be something much Are more than just questioning. Is there 10 seconds? Are you done? Just remember, <laughs> coach misconduct only occurs if you have a conference. <laughs> You're not allowed to go, coach, that's your warning. Like, when he's sitting at the bench. You gotta have a conference, have a conference. And you will give him a coach misconduct either because you didn't change your ruling, there's no misapplication, or because he just simply questioned your judgment. Okay. 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 Moving on to uh, 
Well, he's right. If he's right, throw him out. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want him showing up. <laughs> okay, so the next sequence we're going to talk about, again, now everybody's been through our excellent training. Everybody has some sort of sense of how to run a dual match. What we're looking to do is get some consistency throughout our association. Uh, so before the day of the meet, contact the head coach, athletic director, head coach or athletic director, I say the head coach and the athletic director and the principal of school. Every contact you have in Grandma. Order, no. Every contact, if hey, you got, if you got Cleveland High School, you contact the janitor. Hey, a third of them are going to ignore your contact, okay? So what I, what I would suggest you do, reach, send an email to every contact, call, leave a message for every contact, maybe even text the coach. But be thorough, make and sure you reach out to the coach. Those contacts are provided when we accept they're, they're our, our, they're our they're 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 <coughs> Yeah, but maybe. Do yeah. this. How, yeah. how accurate are they, Bob? Yeah. Uh, they're pretty accurate. I keep them, but the thing is, not every school has necessarily contacts because they don't always give me those contacts. But if they do, when you click on your event in Arbiter, uh, the school or whatever, it will bring up the the address of the school, or and it'll also show the contacts of the school. So if like the AD, if I have them in there, or the coach, phone number, email, whatever. So if, if you call and the coach says I don't coach there anymore. Tell Bob. <laughs> and I had that last year. I don't coach there anymore. Oh, yeah. Well, thanks. He never really coached anyway. So, so again, I, I would say a third of them are going to ignore you. In fact, all of them might ignore you, but when you show up, they're like, hey, I received your email yesterday. Thank you. I knew you were coming. Uh, you know, if you're if you're five minutes late, they say, hey, Damon, you know, like you told me you were coming. It's five o'clock. Where are you? Oh, I'm in the parking lot. Put my uniform on. Uh, confirm weigh in and start time. So there's a certain amount of things that you want to handle when you make that contact. Uh, coach, you know, I just want to make sure uh, the start time, it's a six o'clock start. I'll be there at five o'clock to conduct weigh-ins. Uh, arbiter time is when we're expected to be on duty, usually weigh-in time. Uh, varsity wrestling cannot start more than one hour after the start of weigh-in. Coach, I'm weighing them in at 5 o'clock. I'm assuming we're starting wrestling at 6. No, we're starting wrestling at 6.30. Well, Coach, that's an hour and a half before weigh-ins. Why don't we start the weigh-ins at 5.30? So just some details to be aware of. Uh, ascertain any weight allowances if there is any. Uh, contact other officials to confirm the above. Uh, JV officials for the varsity JV duel. So it would be nice to also get the people in your group all on the same page, the other officials. Uh, but it, you know, always make sure you contact everybody. Let them know you're coming. Uh, inform the home coach and the AD. When you arrive, you want to check in let them know you're there. You're someone who's sitting in the locker room waiting for the waves to start. Let them know you're there. Let them know you arrived. Uh, you should, the book says, you should arrive in uniform and ready to go. I know with our professional world, sometimes that's not possible and with traffic. So if you do not show up in your uniform, quickly get changed in your uniform as best you can. Verify the scale has been certified. These are just some checkpoint things you as an official conducting an official match should go through and check. Is that just paperwork then on scale? That's going to be a little sticker. A, sticker. a little sticker with Sign the date and time. Sticker. Sometimes it may be a, a sheet in a notebook that they've kept. They may have a sticker and they go, oh, here's the certification paperwork. Sometimes it'll be on a plaque in the elevator. In the last couple months. <laughs> yes. Uh, verify if there is a weight allowance. Uh, and then when the visiting team has arrived, have the coach conduct a random draw. So get your random draw out before the weigh-ins. Also find out if there's girls. Always be proactive about that. I would suggest to the association maybe even a coin flip to find out who's going to weigh in first, girls or boys. But that's just to insinuate quality in the sport. Yeah, girls weigh in is a whole different thing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but the way you know, later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll get to you before you know five minutes before wrestling starts. We'll check the girls. And we'll wait. Okay, okay. by then. So here's so here's the set. So again, just to make a quality, I would recommend the coin toss. Uh, arriving on site situation. It's a double duel. The team of D has not notified of a weight pound allowance. Uh, the coach, the, home, the the other coach has the option to be allowing or disallowing that weight allowance. So the weight allowance was not properly notified, conducted. 
But but if, if the coach of that team said, no, we're not going to let the pound go yeah, down, that's that's they win everything. Potentially, yeah. They're going to win. Oh, they're going to win most well. Most coaches in this area won't do that, but they can make it better. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a schedules thing, though. It, you know, you have you can see the schedule. Now. Okay, you usually say notification. If it's on the schedule. It's a notification. That's not notification. Well, there's criteria for the for the coach to have a weight allowance for his team. There's criteria he has to communicate to the other coach. Uh, the right on second the situation. The official determines that the scale is not certified and it hasn't been for the last three years. So what do we do? Well. You notify the home coach that he's not in compliance, but especially in the beginning of the season, we might conduct the weigh-ins in a way. Anyway, we notify the assigner, and for that next match, we'd want to have that scale. There's no might about it. We're not going to let prevent wrestling from happening because the scale is not compliant. Well, the other thing you might do is a lot of teams carry their scale with them, and they may have one yeah, yeah. that is certified. Uh, but the point is, we want to be proactive, we want to catch the scale, we want to notify Bob, our assigner, and we want to make sure that second dual match, that scale is fixed and tightened up. Yeah, I just want to add, that principle is, if you find something that's discrepant like that, uniforms that aren't legal, scale isn't certified, whatever, and you report that, our goal is that the next official that shows up, this isn't a problem anymore. So let, that way the school can fix it. Okay, so that's our goal, is like, something that's wrong tonight that we can't fix, we don't want it to be a problem the next event they have. Okay, folks, no more naked weigh-ins. Hey, all yeah, rest of with, with weigh-ins, it says no shoes or socks. What about headgear? Are they weighing no, over no, their headgear or not? No. No, no. have. It, it, well, they never weigh no shoes. Bring, bring the cover. <laughs> right? So you got to bring the cover. you got to bring the cover. I just can't wear a flower lay. I mean, I, I, Viking so helmet. You wear so it. If they do, they can't take it off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You have to wait. So clarification. Yeah, yeah. yeah. bring it. Clarification of the headgear that mm -hmm. for hair. Correct. They have to present it on their head before they step before on the scale. Step on yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're going to take a slide coming with that. Yeah. Uh, if girl, it's permissible. Well, we, 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 well, we have to clarify this. this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Still, yeah. Well, but make sure, make sure again, yeah. just reader, make sure there's a, an adult present. If you can, if you're with young girls, make sure you have an adult. Don't be alone. Not an adult. What the hell would you a anyway? Yeah. Yeah. That's the a key. woman. Try to have I mean, a woman. Ideally, you're taking down the the, the weight. Not just a woman and an adult. Can't be a woman. I need no girls. No, athletic trainer, a mother, yeah. or, or a teacher. And again, this is your protection. Your protection. Fred's protection. <laughs> My protection. <laughs> now. I have a question. If a team, like Paul's favorite uh, coach from Ingram, came to, a, they were the visiting team, they came to Shortcrest, <clears throat> and they said that they weighed in, that their scale, before they came, and was trying to overrule me because they all missed weight. We, we, we used the scale, and it was official. Nothing's changed. Nothing's so changed. we go by the home team. Yes. But he says our skills said that a bit right. Or well, we have to go by the home. If it's in you, you can analyze it at that point and then move on with the way. Even the coach's misconduct can move on. The host is not a coach's misconduct. Yeah, no, it's a certified scale. We have a certified scale. There's right. I was trying to tell him, but he says our scale said something different. And so, but. If it's in your head, it's in your head. Yeah, yeah. Good news, Paul, that he moved on. Yeah. Okay. Same story though, but it's an uncertified scale that we just talked about and 10 of my kids, well, that's that's what, that's what, that's 10 of the kids visiting scale. don't make weight and they're not making weight by a half pound. Did the other team bring their scale? You can no. use the certified one, if not it's the one that's there, that's all you got, that's all you got. Okay guys, again, this is a, this is a slide again, hoping to all be on the same page about how we conduct and how we set the tone before the match, how we set the tone. So in, in short, you might want to give a loud bark at the group. Make sure everybody's inside the room. Captains, is everybody present? Coaches, is everybody present? Good, everybody quiet down, listen up. Okay, quiet down back there. If you guys quiet down, listen up. Uh, we're going to let them know. Uh, everybody stays in the room. There's no weight change, weight gains. Nobody leaves the room. Nobody enters the room. Make sure the room is protected. It's not so much now that we're not weighing in underwear. We don't have to have all that much privacy anymore. Uh, but remove, remove, review the weighing procedures. All wrestlers will step foot either by score or by weight. You'll inspect hair, nails, and skin. Uh, and then each will step on the scale. Remind them no removing clothing, 
losing weight, gaining weight after stepping on the scale, before stepping on the scale again. Bring any special equipment, wherever any special equipment up to the scale. If you have long hair, if you have hair issues, bring that hair net to the scale with the integrated hair piece. If you have a doctor's note, don't wait for me to ask for the doctor's note. Bring that note, present it to me at the weigh-in. Guys, we're going to do the weigh-in by weight. After each class, we're going to close the weigh-in. I need everybody to quiet down for the next 10 minutes so your teammates don't miss their weight and not be able to wrestle today. It's very important to be very stern to set the tone for the entire three hours to come. One thing that is really specific what we missed on this night, and I've had this reading, is once you've entered everybody in the weigh-in room, everybody needs to be informed that there's no weight-losing procedures happening inside that room, that you cannot be running and jogging and trying, trying to lose weight, that everybody's in there, and nobody can try to lose weight, which would also preclude, should preclude, that you know, you know that you're going to weigh in the heavyweight glass that nobody goes over to the bathroom and uses the bathroom, that it's, it's closed to weigh in. Uh, you're drawing for the weight, though. You don't know who's going to do That's true, but... No, but the thing is, what Lewis is saying, and I, I want to support that, is that once, like, Damon says, we say, everybody's here, everybody's here, okay, close the doors. At this point, no more weight loss or weight gain activity. If you do, you're disqualified, right? Because nobody's wandering off to the bathroom or drinking the two bottles of water so you can bump up to the right weight class. At that moment, no more changing of weight because then we're going to weigh people in. It's all about equity so that we don't have guys who get an extra five or ten minutes to be losing or changing their weight because they were weighing in last versus the guys that stepped on first. That's why they do this. It's like nobody does any more of those activities. Point of clarification, if it's, it is legal for them to step on the scale with their baggy shorts, provided that it's not below the knee, are we rolling up the, uh, the, the pants to do the weigh-in, yeah. or are we just letting them stay there? I think that slide is coming. Can check me in, not weigh-in? Yes, can check. Yeah. Let's see what I don't remember. Before. Yeah, I think that slide is coming. Okay. Uh, so, uh, weigh-ins, uh, physician's notes. Okay, so guide, guidance here for physician's notes. They have to be original. They can't be a photocopy of the physician note. Okay, they have to be signed by the doctor, the MD, or DO, not by the RN, LPN, or What's the DO? Doctor, uh, doctor, doctor. It should be MD. It should no. be such oh, no. MD or DO. 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 No. Where, where did that come from? A physician assistant with the DO. Or a nurse practitioner. The yeah. state of Washington is a provider. Yep. Is a medical the provider. rule book says MD or DO. Does it say MD it? Or last time I checked, it said medical. <laughs> Oh, so if all I have is a PA as my primary care, you cannot tell me to go get somebody else. I mean, that's I, a I got clarification from the state, but my understanding is it's got to be a physician. You can't read the writing anyway. That's the, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've ever looked at the name on the bottom of the form. Or not. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, 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 so much it, but, but it does need to be on the official form. form. Yeah, yeah, which is the next time. Thank you. It must be on the approved skin form provided by the NFHS and not on the doctor's own script pad or on a handwritten sheet. It must be dated within 10 days of the time. Unless that skin condition is not contagious, then that note is good for the entire season. Again, so if I have acne, eczema is not contagious, I have a doctor's note from November 10th, I can use that through the state tournament. If I get a second condition over here, that's all bubbly. Now I need a doctor's note within 10 days on NFHS stationery signed by an MD or DO. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, continued, uh, and I think I just maybe caveat that we still have the ultimate say for skin checks. We have a note that says, you know, this issue, you know, if it, if it still looks suspicious, if it still looks iffy, we still have the, the, the final say in that situation. And some of the ways I learned to handle it, hey coach, I'm not a doctor, I don't know, I don't really have the authority to look at it, but I'm not safe with what's going on here, I'm not okay with that, okay? 
Uh, Although I play one on television. <laughs> Stay at Holiday Inn Express. I, I one. play one after 11 p.m. at night. Suggested order of <laughs> skin, nails, and hair. Uh, nails, hair, skin is what's recommended here. Nails, hair, skin works for me. Uh, hair length cannot be lower than the eyebrows in front. Cannot be. The sideburns can't be lower than the earlobe on the sides. And the hair can't below the shirt collar in the back. So old school mullets are out. Shaved head must be covered. Just you, you LT. Okay. Uh, shaved head must be covered if it's abrasive. You know, some of this five o'clock shadow may be abrasive, unless you're Italian. Uh, hair covers and masks are special equipment. They can be worn at weigh-ins. If I got a scruff, I could wear a face mask but I have to wear it to the scale, take it off before I step on the scale. Inspect the skin by scanning the wrestler's torso. Have the wrestlers raise their arm, then turn to inspect back and shoulders. Remember to inspect legs. I think the recent uh, suggestion we have is the wrestlers drop their singlets to inspect the skin. Is that right? No. Okay, I thought I just... Never got the singlet. Okay. Got the, well, no. if I get clarification on the straps. Well, and, and the reason you have that clarification is if you're going to ask the boys to do it, the girls can't do it. That's why I'm suggesting you leave the singlet yeah. on. Well, we'll get clarification on that before the next meeting. Okay. I promise. Uh, no, and, th and this is kind of important, guys. Have somebody other back you up, like the coach or the, the, the coach. Hey, coach, this wrestler's got to clip their nails. And if you send 15 wrestlers out there to clip your nails, only three of them are going to report back to you. Some folks will take notes of the wrestlers' names and proactively chase them down or have them come back to you. Uh, this suggests maybe have the coach mark hairs, nail, H, N, Shave S, you know, if a gal's got a shave, have an S by her name. Uh, I always like to have them come back and check with me. Um, but, but again, and again, what's very important here is we don't want to be at a tournament and have 15 wrestlers just go and blow you off and completely say, oh, he wanted me to cut my nails, I'm just going to show up with them anyway. Her legs are too bristly. <laughs> so I'll say what I do, which is I'll tell them to cut their nails, I'll tell them to cut their hair, whatever. Skin is a clear issue. If they show up to wrestle with, with long fingernails or unshaven, I start the injury time right then. I mean, that's pretty simple. I don't, I don't bother myself with trying to chase them down because I've told them, I've informed their coach, if they show up to the mat unready, not ready to wrestle, that's pretty simple. That's You've got too long the nails. Boom. Violation. I agree, but at a tournament, you might not get that kid till the finals. Um, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Well, you might never get that kid. I, I make kids cut their hair on the side of the mat all the time because this guy won't make them cut their hair. Anyway, moving on. So, so, so again, my, my suggestion: make sure there's some sort of uh, some sort of protocol. Make sure the kids are actually adhered to that protocol. Next slide. Be more Yeah. Sure. So record the record the weights. Uh, any nails issues? Again, you can lean on the coaches for their your help on that. Uh, start with the visiting team uh, for weighing in after the random draw is determined. Make sure the scale is zeroed out for each wrestler. Uh, if the wrestler fails to make weight, they can step on. Uh, they can try again up to two additional scales if available. Or I think we discussed how many scales are being used for the event. Or if there's only one scale being used for a dual match, they can step on and try twice more. No, once more. Once more. Are most scales digital now? Yeah, most yes. yeah. All of them. Okay. Close the weight class after all wrestlers in the schools uh, have weighed in. Make sure you're loud. Make sure you're clear. Use this as a time to make sure everybody's keeping it down in that room. The less chaos you have during the weigh-ins, the more that tone of that event is going to carry. Since it's a closed when you start, everybody stays in that room till the teams are done. Is that what I understand? They're not required to stay if they no, already weigh in. Yeah. So they can weigh in yeah. and leave. Get but dressed and they're off to that. The, the thing is, you're closing the weight class. So it's yeah, right. 106, 
All the 106 have weighed in. 106 is now closed. We're moving on to the next weight class. Oh, wait, I got another 106. I'm sorry, right, Coach, it's been close. That, that's the idea. Yeah. And then those 106ers can go and drink and have fun and eat whatever they want. Right. 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 That's you, so that's that's <laughs> That'd be my question, because you have so many dead drinkers, you don't know that. Okay. Except for the weight they wrestle. I'm, I'm just saying, I'm saying, okay, you've gone through five weights and you got a kid in the back now that's drinking water. Now I gotta stop and go, uh, what weight were you? Oh, you've already weighed in? Well, you tell them there's no eating or drinking in the way they have to leave to, so they have to, leave to do that. Okay. That's that way you don't get into that situation. That's what I was thinking is nobody leaves or they can leave and do whatever. Okay. Okay. And, and as I would instruct, nobody enters or leaves this room until weigh-ins are over. I would instruct that myself. And if, you proact if you're proactive about your fishing, no eating, no drinking until weigh-ins are over. From now on, stop it right now. Okay? And that's going to help avoid those situations. Uh, for a double dual meet, weigh-ins are scheduled at 5 o'clock. However, at 5.05, one school has not arrived. It happens to be... With the recent, with the recent, uh, Metro League. Yeah, Metro League. Um, so weigh in the remaining three schools when that fourth school arrives. Weigh them in at that time. I, in this situation, I would, I would check in with the home coach and say, hey, coach, what are we going to do here? We don't have Chief Self. It's rush hour. It's 5 o'clock. You know, should we call them and have them turn back home and go home, or should we have them weigh in at 5.05 or 5.10? Uh, Pre-meet discussion. <clears throat> We just talked about proactively avoiding situations in the weigh-in. Pre-meet discussion is a chance for the official to set the expectations to the wrestlers so that they know everybody has their own style in this room. It's your chance to communicate to the wrestlers. What is your style? What are you looking for in this evening and at this stage in the season? So it's, you want to be very clear. You want to be concise. You do not want to take up a lot of time. And you want to think ahead. What are three bullet points I want to hone in on? Not 15. What are three to four bullet points? So topics to, to cover. Stalling, safety, communication, sportsmanship, new rules, rule changes. So me personally, real quick, I do three. I do positioning. Make sure you're in the proper position because I like to give out cautions, folks. Okay? Make sure you listen to my voice. I'm the one in charge here. Listen. I'm often going to say, center, center. Wrestle in the center. Listen to me. I'm the authority here tonight, wrestlers. Everybody understand? Questions about positioning? Questions about listening to me? Third point, listen to me also because if things get hairy, I'm going to voice it. I want to keep everybody safe. I don't want to let anybody get hurt today. If you pick your opponent up, I say, careful, wrestler. Make sure you return safely. I'm not trying to coach you. Listen to my voice. We want to keep it safe. If you have an arm bar, I say, watch that arm. Watch that arm. Listen to my voice. We don't want to let anybody get hurt. Anybody have questions? Great. Thanks for going out for the best sport on earth. Let's have a great match. That was about three minutes, two minutes. We don't want to, we don't want to burn out their energy when they're looking to get on the mat. But we also don't want to send them out there. And all of a sudden, that's a caution. Another caution. What are you doing? You know, you're supposed to line up here. Or, you know, we want to make sure our expectations are clear for the wrestlers. Going back to the previous slide with the team being late. So let's suppose it's a 6 o'clock start. And she self is now not here until 5.35. What are we doing? 6 o'clock start. So you've already waited in the other three teams. Team three at 6 o'clock start. But they're required to have a half hour. Uh, half no, they're not. No, they're not. So what basically these and these situations happen frequently, right? Like we run into this a lot, especially here on the east side when someone's crossing the bridge or going up and down 405. So the thing is, if there's if you're running into this situation, let's say the way is supposed to be a five, it's ten till the other team hadn't showed up. Always check with the coach, the home coach, like, hey, coach, have you been in contact with Inglemore? You know, no, I don't have his cell phone number. Okay. Um, all right. If they're not here at 5, are you okay if we wait till 5.15? You know, give them a chance. Yeah, yeah. Like, make sure you have consent. In the situation now, let's take Matt's situation. Let's say three teams have weighed in and we're waiting for a fourth. And it's like, 
coaches are, yeah, how about we give him till 5.30 or whatever. Yep, 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 or you know, is that been, oh, I'm in contact with him. He's, yeah, great. He'll be here at 5.30, 5.30, something, something like that. Okay, great. Wait a minute when they get here, right? So just get their consent if you're going to do something like that. But if they say, no, 5.30 is cut off. Like they knew, they should have come, they know tonight's a, you know, a Seahawk game, they should have been a little earlier, and boy, it's 5.30, well, okay. The coach, like we were supposed to wait at 5. Like, right. And again, the, the rule that we're applying there is because it is a shoulder-to-shoulder weigh-in yeah. that's required which we are now mitigating. Which the coach can, they can weigh in, not weigh in shoulder to shoulder if the coach relinquishes that, right? Exactly. So weigh in shoulder to shoulder is by mutual consent, but if the home coach says, I don't care. I know they might be late, the bus might have broken up. So when they get here, Matt, they can weigh in as long as they get here in time to get on the mat by six, because exactly. we're starting at six. Exactly. Okay, so uh, pre-meets, Pre-meets are suggested to occur in the locker room by the NFHS rules. However, if we have women for equity reasons, let's do it on the mats. But if you can conduct the pre-meet discussion in the locker room, it might be best rather than doing Just a point of yeah. clarification. Not by the rules. The, the, the referee's manual contains guidance on this. The, the rules are a whole different book. We have to abide by what the rules say. The referee's manual is a set of guidelines, guidelines. and recommendations, so it's not doesn't Care yeah. the same way as we're Rather than worried about doing the mat, I would just take them over to the side of the corner because okay. you maybe have a JV match going exactly. on over there. Take them over there and you know, the bench. basically make sure they've got their questions. If you limit it to three minutes, something like that, Bob will be unable to reference. <laughs> 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 so, okay. so, so now that we have a lot of double points, he said three bullet points. He did say well, three minutes. Well, he's working on his uh, last really week. So he's gonna, well, he's got 90 to one. So, so now that we have a lot of double So that's a minute and a half to two minutes. Three per bullet. Here we go. Right. So now that we have a lot of double duels, is there a preferred mechanic for so. pre-meeting four teams? <coughs> two officials. Two officials, two teams at a time. You see that? I think it's very important. One, two teams aren't going to hear the other, one of the officials who's officiating them. So, Sorry, how much do you attack? Yeah, but if we're all doing pretty much the similar, then yeah. the consistency. Well, that leads to my next question. Are, are we? Sometimes we do all four of them at the same time. It's right. like, hey, everybody right. gather around here. Like, exactly. And then one of us will just, boom, knock it out. Yeah. Sit next to somebody that has different colors from what you're yeah. wearing. Um, I'm with Bob. I'm going to get something to eat and come back. This hasn't, this hasn't been popular. <laughs> this hasn't been popular when I suggested in the past, but I like to do my pre-meet at the weigh-in, before they weigh in, they're all there. I give it to all the teams at once. Now weigh in, we're done. What about the girls? Yeah. The girls? I give it to the girls also because it's only 90 to 120 seconds. I can say the same thing twice. Yeah. Well, it's very important Good. here, folks, is whatever you tell team A, make sure you tell team B. If you have two officials telling team A, B, C, D, two officials get together and say, hey, what are we going to talk about? And let's make sure we have a consensus so that every wrestler hears the same message during the pre -meet. Does everybody do pre -meets? Besides work from guys who don't. Or should you so, say you don't? <laughs> what's that? I said, why don't you say who doesn't do one? Uh, well, I don't want to embarrass anybody. Oh, okay. So, part of the book, I mean, well, it's, it's not, not actually. It is. It's not actually. No, it says if it's requested by It says if it's requested. Right. So it's not actually required. It's probably one of those guidance. Probably. It's a guidance issue more so. So all, I, w I will actually only pre-meet if a coach says, are we, are, are, do you want to meet with my wrestlers? Say, sure. I think okay. sometimes, particularly later in the season, yeah, late in the season you know, they've heard sure. pre-meets every right. time. Okay. You know, okay. I'll ask the coach, I said, you, you, you have any needs for clarification on anything or you want me to pre-meet and, you know, as an, tell me if they want. As that an time. association, should we have a policy? Do you feel it's that important or not? I'm like uh, Paul here. I will ask the coach, Coach, would you like a pre-meet? If not, I don't want to interrupt the way that you guys are preparing for your day. Let me ask you this. Has anybody had a wrestlers that kind of tend to not stay in the center 10-foot circle and kind of kind of go on the outside and kind of... Do you ever have that issue during a match? Not after the first time I... Well, this is, a great, this is a great opportunity to avoid those situations before they happen. Or, or did you ever have wrestlers come out... In the, in the very last match of the season, and you have three cautions yeah. in the first four weight classes. Yeah, but I, 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 I've, I've had that with our team, not a caution. Yeah. Okay, so I'm calling. <laughs> I'm here, so I'm just, they, so should, they should be coached all of this to begin with. So let's say the association encourages premiums. Sure. Yes. Okay. Ready, Jason? 
I think this year, with the um, near fall points and the pin being on the outside, I will definitely re enforce wrestle in the center of the circle, then you don't have the ref making any screwed up calls on that edge because it's a weird call. Stay in the center, you don't have to worry about it. Okay? Excellent premium. Yep. And that it could be that short. That's, that's gonna be I mean the sounds of it, that's, that's gonna be that's the same with the last bound, the swing, the mat, and all that stuff. Nothing happens if you stay in the middle. So we can have your uh Terry just said this. Okay. On skin checks. No footwear. Boys remove shirts or singlet tops. That's what you're talking about. Okay. Okay. Girls remain in uniform. Right. Did, just right from did, it, did you say that they can't happen in the same yeah, way? Yeah, he's clear. He's getting clarification so, on that. Okay, so that's what, that's, that's consistent with what he told me. Is, so what about rolling up the shorts so we didn't? Uh, no, the thing is, there should there should be shorts to roll up. That's the thing. These compression shorts that you're supposed to be wearing are tight. Yeah, but but again, if it's you know, again, if it's coming okay. down this far, there's no more no more undergarments. Yeah. Okay, okay. It's it's just, it's it's four inches or longer. Right. right. So we're not worried about the weight. All right. So we're yeah. so just a question for you now. Full length tight. So they're not gonna if they if they don't weigh in with them and they have them on the mat. Is that a violation? You have to weigh in with, with, with the competition uniform. Right, so they they basically have a full length tight. How are you going to check your skin? We're not. You're not. not. You're not. The tights? Yeah. You're not having them just weighed in a singlet? Yep. Well, singlet or are they new? Yeah. No, I know it. But they don't have the tights. But there's no way in which they're going to be dressed in the way. No, they're not. Just cover them up. If the full length tights, where? And we'll have to make some Right there. You can change the way you So wait a minute. They, the they, they can weigh in with okay. their tights on? Is that what you're saying? They have to. Yeah. Well, they have to. It just says uniform. If they are wearing the tights, that is competition uniform. With stirrups, they have to weigh in with those. And the whole that doesn't make any sense because you're nope. making them take their tops down that's my to check the skin. Exactly. Right. Like, like I said, no, it's not for Paul, like I said, the beginning of the meeting, a lot of things aren't making sense. So we are just do what they tell us to do. Is it, uh, and that's, how are you going to keep track of a guy? Well, so, if the right, weight weighs in, we're, we're tight.